What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. The day after the adrenaline rush has come down for the trial lawyers in this case, and they are probably finally sleeping easy, even though there's still a long road ahead before this Daryl Brooks situation comes to its actual legal final resting place. And on Monday, we are going to have a hearing to schedule when his sentencing will be. And that's when we will hear from the victims. That's when we'll hear from uh, Daryl Brooks. And that's where we may hear from Don Woods, Daryl Brooks' mother, who he said may testify for him at trial. She has not been shy about giving interviews. And we are going to listen to a few of them and watch a few of them together tonight. And it is actually very interesting because she makes some arguments that may create appellate issues for him. She may let us into some issues he is having, and she definitely lets us into some of his mindset about what he thinks and feels about this case. We actually did learn some new things from these interviews. A lot of you have already seen them. A lot of you sent them to me. I wanted to wait Listen to what the jury was listening to, for the most part, in the courtroom. We also got a lot of extra stuff when the jury was out. But I wanted to listen to that before I watched these interviews. And we are going to watch three interviews together. And there's something interesting in each one, but there's a common theme throughout. So we're going to watch these and break them down together. I'm going to answer your questions as to how these will affect this case and whatever other questions you may have. Uh, I appreciate everybody joining me tonight. I'm sure you're all subscribed, but if you're not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, and like the video, if you want to finish up with Daryl Brooks today, we're going to hit it again Monday, and then we will probably wait until sentencing to hit it again, unless something else happens. And if it does, you all will let me know at the end of this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the most requested topics that you all have. Um, for what's coming next, in addition to some of the stuff we're already covering. Um, So we'll stick around if you want to talk about that at the end. And tomorrow, we will talk more about picking our two giveaway winners. And I think we're going to play the Elizabeth Holmes video that Pete recorded this week tomorrow. So if you're interested in that case, stick around. If you started here on the channel, stick around, because tomorrow we're going to be playing that. But for now, Let's get to what Daryl Brooks' mom said, specifically about him representing himself and what she expects to happen at trial. All three of these interviews are pretty short, so I think we can listen to them one time speed without issue. Of course, I listened to them in two times speed when I watched them by myself. But let's take a listen as to what Don Brooks said about how she thinks this trial is going to go. Pages. Don. Wait, did I pick the wrong one? Nope, here we go. All right. Woods made her plea as a mother to the court. Why did you decide to, to write that letter? I wanted to help Daryl. I knew that he was not mentally capable of presenting himself as his own attorney. Woods agreed to speak with us, provided we not show her face. She says she's received threats since her son was accused in the Waukesha Christmas Parade attack. What has led to Daryl's behavior? His mental illness, not being medicated. Wood says her son should be in a mental hospital, but Brooks withdrew his insanity plea earlier this month. And just this week, a judge decided Brooks is articulate and intelligent enough to represent himself. And he always said... So this has a lot to do with competence and mental illness. You can actually have a mental illness and still be competent to represent yourself and still be competent to try a case on your behalf. Now she is arguing that he absolutely is not competent because of his mental illness. She is arguing that this is a major issue and he should not have been allowed to represent himself, which he would absolutely disagree with vehemently under oath in court. He would disagree with this, but she is doing her best to, I think, create more issues for appeal. You know, Mama, I'm fighting for my life. And I said, I know that, baby. 
but we have to look at reality for what it is. What is it? You know, I said, you did do what they said you did, even though it wasn't intentional, but you did, you know, and you're going to have to go to prison. Daryl's not an attorney. How do you think he's going to handle the proceedings? You did what they said you did. You didn't do it on purpose, but you're going to have to go to prison. It's interesting, right? Because that's what his closing argument sounded like. It seems like he was already knowing that was going to happen. And he was going to get convicted from some of this and he was going to go to prison. I'm going to, and I hate to say this, you're going to see manic, full blown. So what are we going to see when he represents That's himself? He's not an attorney. See. You're going to see manic. Try and talk to him before the trial. If he calls me, I will. I tried talking to him on Tuesday again. Wood says she won't be attending her son's trial. She already knows the verdict and what her son did. Chance to say anything to the families impacted by this? I have written a letter to the families. Well, and again, I give my condolences. My heart goes out to each of them. I ask God to give them strength. I ask God to give them peace and comfort them. All right. So that was interview number one. And we learned that they both knew he was going to get convicted. They both knew he was going to go to prison. She believes he's not mentally fit to represent himself because of his bipolar disorder, or manic, or you know the mental issues that he's dealing with. But she's wrong. That's not how it works. Um, but there's more that could actually be interesting I think it's in this next one um, where she talks about him not getting his medication in prison. That could be an issue potentially if it's actually true and he was having some kind of break. But we were all at trial, right? Basically, virtually. We all watched it. And it did not seem like that was his issue, right? Obviously had issues, but that did not seem like that was his issue. understand mental illness and understand people who I mean mentally ill are hurting they're trapped and a lot of them don't know the way I will show compassion the families who have loved ones that are suffering from mental illness a lot of them are ashamed to even talk about it or to say he's crazy and don't want to have anything to do with them but you need to um those people need to help more than anything. Seek out treat, treatment where there is. Speak up for them. Be an advocate for them. And then when you see people out in the street, you see them acting, and you just laugh at them, joking, and you tell them, you know, stop and say a prayer. Because I sent Daryl early on a poem written by Maya Angelou called I Know Why the Gay Bird Sings. And I learned that poem in the seventh grade for Black History Month. And I never thought about that poem again. And the Lord brought it to my memory. And I remember back when I was a child, my grandma had a pet. Well, I'm glad you made it for this, Heidi. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with her and how, you know, we should treat people with mental illnesses and how, you know, sometimes they're not treated appropriately or the way that they should be. And that, you know, we should say a prayer for them. We should do what we can to help them. I don't disagree with any of that. Um, but he had his opportunity to plead not guilty by reason of insanity, and he didn't. So if he didn't, and the court found him to be competent, I don't love using that now after the fact, after he's been convicted of these horrible crimes, to try and throw more doubt on it and try to throw some shade at the verdict. And to me, that, that's a major issue. 
Pierce named Jerry. And he, I, I remember that so vividly. She would walk through the cage and Jerry would sing. He had a beautiful singing voice. And we all thought Jerry was happy because he could sing and work and his cage was right in front of the window where he can look out in the backyard. And we thought, but then when I, Lord brought that point to me, I pulled it up again and I read it again. And I realized that Bird wasn't singing because it was happy with that Bird was singing because he wanted to be out of that cage and be free. And I told Gerald, I said, you're this cage bird. Mental illness has clipped your wings and those prison bars are going to be your cage. And, you know, no one felt his singing just come to fall from their fears. But I told him that, you know, he keeps singing to someone hears him. Hopefully, someone, this will bring awareness to mental illness via our senators and our governors and elected officials, court, police. And when these people come before the penal system, instead of them locking them up, say, hey, what can we do to help this person become mentally well? That's what needs to happen. Do you think he can get help in? in no. Very little help is done for individuals who are incarcerated with mental illness. That's why I wanted him to go to a hospital where he can still get treatment, but that won't be. He would be behind prison where he would not get any services if he does need to be very little and would not be what he needs. So it sounds like you don't think it was fair what he received today. Yeah. But you think he should have done any prison time? Yes. Will you be at sentencing to support? No. I already know. Too hard to watch? Too hard to watch. You know, I mean, what's, what's to say, you know? We have to move forward. You know, this is just... Well, there's actually a lot to say, especially when he's been talking about you so much, and that can make a difference at sentencing. She's probably right, though. It's not for him. She's also right that there's not a lot of help for mentally ill people in prison, but there are other avenues to be institutionalized, and that not guilty by reason of insanity can actually get you there if it's legitimate and the doctors feel that way. And there's another interview we're going to watch of her, the last one, where she does talk a little bit more about him being institutionalized. I um... Hopefully, something good will come out of it. How do you feel right now? Right now, I just want to curl up and die. That's how I feel right now. I just want to go somewhere. Just curl up and die. All right. So that's the end of interview number two. And before we get to the last one, I am going to answer some questions here, but let me shoot a text real quick. Um, all right. Purple AJ, does she have liability as the owner of the car? Did he have a license or just a state ID? He did not have a license, but because he's her son, um, he is most likely a permissible user, so she probably would have liability. B. Smith, what does DB mean when he says accept value in return? I think what he means is I'm only going to accept it if I get something for it. Like you got to give me something for me to give you something. And that's not actually a thing in court. And P, if he has prescription meds, can't they make him take them in jail? They can give them to him. They usually don't force them down your mouth. Some they would probably force upon um, – inmates, but they give them to him if he's supposed to give them to him for the most part. If they withhold them, that could be an issue, which again, I think that's in the next interview we're going to watch. Uh, Debbie Faison Cook. Peter, in Florida, she could be held liable as well. Correct. Dad was FHP and he drilled him. He never let anyone drive your car. Absolutely. You are, you are just like the at-fault driver if you own the car in Florida. 
T-Bird Wasson, like father, like son. DB's oldest son had court today in Waukesha. Battery, DA, intimidation, property damage, three felonies plus more, 18 months of probation. Wisconsin State website verified. That's really sad. Sarah, how do you gain access to jail uh, phone call recordings? Public record request, I guess. Cindy Lou Who, has he been diagnosed? What was the diagnosis? What meds is he supposed to be taking? Not sure I'm buying this story. I haven't seen any of it officially. I would be shocked if he was officially diagnosed with something and they were withholding medication. Not that it's never happened. I would just be surprised. The real Mrs. L. DB is a narcissist first above any mental health issue. Legendary Mayor Mary likes turtles. DB did not have mania. Personality disorders are not healed by medications. Good point. His mental illness illnesses are expressly excluded from insanity laws. Some, some potentially could still get you there, but the way he was acting was not somebody that was incompetent to represent himself. I'm pretty confident in that. YouTube lurker, with all due respect to his mama, he wasn't born a monster. He wasn't always a monster. Many factors besides mental illness have contributed to his current state, in my humble opinion. What's really interesting is he's got some TikTok videos out there. We saw the YouTube video that are deplorable. He's got a TikTok video, which we're not going to watch together, where he calls Erica Patterson a B multiple times, how he was pimping and she was hoeing, and he got popped for it, and she lied to him, and they made up a story and all this stuff, and he got her pregnant, and it's like a very disgusting video. Um, this was not a one-off for Daryl Brooks, in my opinion. Tori, I do feel bad for the Brooks family because they're being treated horribly because of his deeds and actions they don't deserve. Thank you for showing all sides, Peter. You really are the lawyer. I'm proud to know. Thank you. That's a great, that's a great little phrase there. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know Don Woods at all. Um, she's not fully excusing what he did. She admits that he did it. She even says he should go to prison. She says he should be guilty. She believes wholeheartedly that it was an accident. And a lot of that is based on his mental illness that she probably knows a lot about the issues he has. Now, was she responsible for them? There's no real evidence of that that we know of. So it's hard to speculate on that. But at least she didn't say, oh, there's no way he did it. Because we've seen some defendants' moms say, he didn't do it. They're just doing this to him because of this or that. Or they just don't like him because he's different than them or talks a little different. Or because of his mental illness, they're just hammering on him. She's not saying that. She's not saying they're taking advantage of him because of his mental illness. And she knows that he made the decision to represent himself, even though she tried to get him not to. Camilla, he's the boy who cried wolf, not the caged bird that sings. Chris and Savannah, can Wisconsin get the death penalty back? We really need it. We have too many killers, pedos, rapists, and sex offenders. Hey, talk to your uh, elected officials. Brian Ailman, I get what she is saying about mental illness, but how do you help someone that doesn't want to be helped? How do you fix someone who doesn't think they're broken. It's very difficult, especially when they're an adult like Daryl Brooks was. And as he said, a grown man with grown children. Yaritza, as a mother, knowing he had chronic mental issues, she could always request a Baker Act, especially seeing he's committing crime after crime, just a mom defending her child, guilt. This, these are difficult topics, right? Because you don't want your child to hate you or to not speak to you anymore, or cut you out of their life. It's hard to balance doing what's best for them. Um, while also, you know, hurting them, I guess you could say, helping, hurting them to help them. It's difficult waters to wade. So I think it's hard to just make those calls at this point. But I think it's okay to say his actions were absolutely deplorable. Zamlot, if he's so mentally ill, why did she put up $1,000 to bail him out? She put him on the street. Maybe he told her he was going to get help. That helps as well. Or that happens as well, where people lie, say they're going to get help, and they don't. Tina Crichton, I believe in mental illness. There are varying degrees. I pray for all as I have a chemical imbalance and am blessed to have insurance treatment and to live a successful and beautiful life. Blessings up. Thank you, Tina. Dave is a new member. Jesse Greathouse. The caged bird didn't kill six people and injure 60. If she wanted her son to get help, she had 40 years to do it and to be a better mother. Idiocracy is real and we're living it. Melanie, what is your stance on the death penalty? So I vacillate, actually. I go back and forth, but I can say this. If the state has it, Nicholas Cruz, in my opinion, is a situation where it's justified. 
I also think that, and I actually was just talking with a buddy about this today. It's not immediate, right? And because he was talking about, oh, Nicholas Cruz, there's no way he's ever going to be rehabilitated. I agree that it's slim. The chances are slim to none, but there is still a chance that he's rehabilitated, at least in some form or fashion, or can right some wrongs or help some people in different ways. Um, but the death penalty is not immediate, right? He would still have time for some rehabilitation before he pays for his crimes. I really go back and forth, and I can see the arguments on both sides for it. I'm not a I'm not a staunch believer in either, and because I guess I can see a case by case basis, I guess that would put me in the realm where I'm okay if your state does have the death penalty, but I do think it should be reserved for the worst of the worst. Dana Rose, where was DB's mother when he was pimping out a 15 year old, getting her pregnant and abandoning the baby? Where was she during his first felony? No doubt that that he is. He's troubled. Robin Rogers, on Monday, is the judge going to allow victims to say whatever they want or cut them off if they start saying things like, I hope you burn in hell? Monday is not going to be the day the day the victims speak. It's not going to be the day of sentencing. It's not going to be the victim impact statements. That's not going to be Monday. Monday she, Monday, she was clear, is just scheduling. But eventually, the victims will speak. Um, Linda K. I am tired of everything being labeled mentally ill. No doubt. Greg Albright, the purpose of prison is not rehabilitation, is to remove dangerous people from society. It's actually a twofold purpose. It's supposed to be, number one. Number two, I am speaking from a personal level on where I see the difference between a life sentence and the death penalty. I think different people would say one is more miserable than the other, right? So if you're thinking of the worst punishment for the worst criminals, the death penalty is not the worst punishment for everybody. Some people actually believe life is worse. I'm thinking myself, my morals, the way I think about things, I hope for rehabilitation always. And it can come in many different ways. And that's the way I weigh it in my mind, Greg. And rehabilitation is supposed to be part of incarceration and part of these sentences. Aaron, at least, especially if they're going to go back out into society. Life and death, probably not. Aaron, at the least, his mother was a catalyst in all this. Stacy Walpole, my son is diagnosed narcissistic bipolar Never drove over people. Ashley Ducharme. Isn't the death penalty more expensive for taxpayers? So this kind of goes both ways. I've seen it. I've seen arguments made for people that are whatever side they're on. They argue that's the more expensive or less expensive side, excuse me, because of all the mandatory appeals, because of everything that goes into it. I'm not sure. To me, it would seem like life would be more expensive on average, depending on how long people live, of course. Laura Beth, Peter, I saw in a local interview in which she said that he didn't remember what happened. Also, have you seen his 2007 meth addict prison interview? I have not seen that. If it's not too nasty and not too long, send it to me and maybe we'll watch it together. But we're going to watch that other video now, the one that you just referenced here. Uh, this is the last interview we're going to play of his mom tonight. Taking this shirt off, the trial has really been nothing sort of dramatic. And that's why Wood says she isn't watching because, well, it's just too much for her to take. Right now, I'm just heartbroken, just shattered. Did he ever talk about driving through the parade route? Did you have he, a conversation with him? Early on. And he does not remember. Every time Daryl goes into a manic where... So do you guys believe this, that he didn't remember what happened and he went into a manic episode, that's what's happened, and he really doesn't remember what happened. Does anybody believe that? He explodes like that. He does not remember what he did. You have to tell. When he goes into a manic episode like that, he explodes like that and then doesn't remember. I had some friends or acquaintances in college that would drink so much and things would happen, but they wouldn't remember when it came time to talk to their girlfriends the next morning. And I used to think, hmm, isn't that convenient? And it seems like people use stories like that often when they do things they don't want to remember and they say they don't remember. And I think that that's kind of where I land on how she describes this is that makes some sense to me. Let me know what you guys think. If I'm being too hard, let me know. Help him. What he did. He know what you told him, but he can't recall the act. I don't believe from what I've known and what I've seen that Daryl was even in his right mind. 
I don't think he was even conscious to what he was doing. Whose idea was it for him to represent himself? Was it his, yours, he, together? No, I would never advise him to represent, no one to represent himself, especially. Well, that's a smart instinct of his mom that he should have listened to his mom's advice there where she said, I would never advise him or anyone to represent themselves. And she's about to say, especially in something this serious. So he didn't, he obviously didn't follow her counsel, right? For those of you saying she could have done this, she should have done this, should have said that grown man, 40 years old. And he obviously didn't follow her counsel. Right. So I think he's, he's, he bears the responsibility in In a case that's so serious, but he insisted. No, he felt that his lawyers did not have his best interest at heart. So he's been in court and he has taken off his shirt and he has interrupted the judge and the judge is throwing him out saying, you know, you can't keep doing this. His behavior in court, and we've seen this play out, is erratic. Erratic. At times towards the judge disrespectful. What do you say to that? What message would you send to him? I have talked to him about it and I have told him, I said, you're going to have to try to keep a cool head because it's making you look bad. But he's not medicated. So this is a good point right here by happy caffeinated couple. Concerning official diagnosis, when the judge was going over paperwork to allow him to defend himself, she said he was diagnosed with bipolar and defiant personality disorder, but still considered competent to defend himself. Exactly. That does not render you incompetent. If he was, if he needed medication that he absolutely needed to continue, they would have given it to him, especially if the judge knew about this diagnosis, yet the mom is saying he was not medicated in prison. That could be Daryl telling the mom that. That could be the mom thinking he needs medication that he doesn't. It could mean a lot of things. But I really don't think that he needed medication to continue, and it was absolutely necessary, and they withheld it from him. I would be very surprised at that. They're not giving him anything for his illness. What message do you have for the, the families? I just want them to know that that was not a deliberate act. When you're manic and you're out of control, you don't know what you're doing. He didn't know what he, I don't, he didn't know what he was doing. He was not in his right mind. It wasn't intentional. He didn't mean to hurt nobody. We talk about the family often and the victims. And he says to me that he prays for them too. And he has to live with the fact regardless to what goes down, what happened, six people died because of him. He, he is very, he's full of shame. Six people died because of him and he's full of shame. To me, these are positive indicators that he knows it was his fault, that he is ashamed of it, that it is bad and he caused these deaths he caused these problems he caused this heartache he should feel bad to me that is that's positive and i i get that you guys don't believe that but if it was i think those are positive now i hear that literally none of you guys believe that but i'm just saying i think that that you're right his i didn't see any shame in court i agree with you there you brought up the little sparks boy what would you say to his mom tonight if she sees this, what message would you like to say to her? I would tell her, not just his mom, but his dad and his brother too, that little Jackson, he had his whole life ahead of him. And he's now a sweet angel. He did not deserve what happened to him. Do you think Daryl should go to prison and for so how long? There should be some accountability to what he did. Yes, ma'am. How long? That's not for me to say. My only concern was that instead of being in prison, I feel he needs to be institutionalized. So it is interesting. He needs to be institutionalized. He's needed to be institutionalized for a while, I think we could argue. Um, and I don't know if he has any of that in his past, if he actually did seek 
um, medical help, but it's too late for that now, some people would say, especially now that he's been convicted. Of this. Where he can get the help he needs. All right. So that is the end of the third interview. And again, same themes throughout. Mental health played a big part in this. She thinks he should be institutionalized, not, not prison, but he knows what he did. He knows he caused these deaths. He's shameful. He's remorseful. He's sorry. He knows he's going to prison. It was not intentional. He blacked out. He didn't remember it. He didn't know what he did. It was, he was manic. That was her consistent story throughout. She didn't take the stand and say that she didn't, um, uh, put that into evidence or anything like that. So it is, it is only words at this point in interviews. P hop four, four, four. Can the judge tell him exactly how she feels about him and his actions? And do you think she will? She can. I'm not sure if she will. I mean, I would, but I'm not sure if she will. William long. Could his mother have talked to the DA if she was so concerned about him getting his meds and would they have checked? She could talk to the DA. She could also talk to the jail. That's probably the easier place. And I think they would have checked. I think they would have looked at it, but I could be naive. We've had that situation happen and they have looked at it and fixed it. But we've also had the situation happen where they're giving the wrong meds or not enough meds or too much meds. So that stuff does happen. Steph Morris, I have blackouts when I have bad anxiety. I was not at all saying that blackouts don't exist. Blackouts absolutely do happen. They are side effects of lots of different medical conditions. I'm just saying some people conveniently use blackouts. That's all I meant. The squid, it doesn't matter if he remembers or not. He's shown violent tendencies in the past and definitely needs to be removed from society. Rebecca Bagnell, in appeals, can he switch to insanity? No. Julie O, he remembers. I have a dad the same way. They remember. I bet Erica has apologies in the form of a new purse, new shoes, etc. They never apologize, just buy stupid things like nothing happened. She is clearly an enabler, Aaron said. Cindy T, I feel HW didn't like listening to women, so wouldn't listen to his mom, no matter what about counsel representing himself in this case. I think she means DB. Illinois Observer, mass murder should be a federal crime, and DP should be automatic if proven guilty, in my opinion. Linda LaFerrer, as a nurse, never heard of amnesia related to bipolar. Terry W., he never showed remorse. Mom's blinded by love. And that's possible. That's possible. Jennifer Sprague, this is just so hard to watch because his mother is not on trial, but it looks like she is. I agree. I'm not condemning her. I'm not, we are not here to condemn her. I'm more interested in what she says Daryl Brooks said to her on what she says about his past, his mental illness, what he says about what happened that night. And I think if he took the stand, they would use some of this. They could use some of this to impeach him. You know it was your fault these people died. You know you should go to prison. Uh, World Austerity Report. Is there any way to obtain the psych evals that rendered him incompetent? Or I'm sorry, him competent? Very, very unlikely. Azam, Peter, can you explain what is scheduling? Thanks. Yeah, that just means that they're going to show up. They're going to pick a date where they all, they're going to talk about how long they think the sentencing hearing is going to go. It may be more than one day. We have 60 something victims and people that were affected by this. The judge wants to all give them all time to speak. So if they all speak, it's going to be days of their victim impact um, statements. And then Daryl Brooks will have his chance for himself. It doesn't sound like his mom's going to be there according to her, but he may have himself, other people say something at sentencing potentially and that could take days. So they're going to come. They're going to see how long it'll take, see if they can agree to that, pick the days, schedule it out, because the judge couldn't do anything past Monday. Lori Smith, thank you for the super sticker. Carmen, DB knew exactly DB knew exactly eschatology he did. He ran and changed his appearance, shows consciousness of guilt. I'm not sure. I don't know what you mean by eschatology there. Is that at end times? DMZ, I didn't watch the entire court case. Was there a reason why the mother didn't testify? I think she would have been bad for Dale Brooks. I mean, if that comes out in front of a jury and they think they're trying to figure out if he's guilty or not guilty of killing these people, he loses on 61 counts right there. And he also loses on the lesser included of the other six counts. So you're kind of punting a lot if the mom testifies, in my opinion. Stacey Walpole, narcissism feels no empathy. It's only about attention. 
It's about him, good or bad. They take no self-responsibility. My son has similar issues, sadly. Annie Lee. Even Dr. Jekyll was responsible for Mr. Hyde's actions. Interesting. She wants to protect her son, but if he was that bad and she was aware, then why didn't she get him help before? Not excusable after the fact. Uh, Coach Carlos Jones, refreshing to hear a more heartfelt point of view. CM Nelson, I'm so angry. I have mental illness. I take my medication. DB was able to remain calm and cogent, and he wanted to. Calling BS. The real Mrs. L, anyone else black out and flee hiding? Thought not. Javers, he knows right from wrong well enough to lie to either her or the jury about his remorse. Psychosis during mania happens, but that doesn't excuse him. It could be temporary insanity if he did black out, like legitimately. I, I, I know some of you are saying that's not a side effect, which is fine. I don't, I don't know all the side effects to all of these mental illnesses. I usually find out when we have a case that, that makes them relevant. Uh, thank you, Lorna. But if that was actually true, and thank you, Monique, um, then that could have been a reason – for an insanity plea. Jules O. I think he knew what he did. She is his mom. Uh, they will always love their kid and defend them when they can. No doubt. Christy Hack. I thought the DA put on the record one day about him refusing medication that day. Anyone else remember that or did I dream it up? I honestly have no idea. I have no idea. Oh, you guys like my cup? My mother-in-law made it for me. Pretty cool, huh? Melinda Arroyo, I don't think he's crazy. He has anger issues. John O'Rourke, great listen like always. By the way, feeling that flossy shirt. Thank you. This was a gift from a YouTube fan. The best. Uh, that laser lady, I'll condemn her. She handed him the murder weapon after bonding him out, uh, after he ran her, her ran, over, ran over someone else. She is an accessory. Lorna. Jails offer medication. It is up to him to take. There is a psychiatrist in jails to support any needs. Fran, Dr. Hare of UBC says they, narcissists and psychopaths, born without empathy, are subhuman entities. I agree. Uh, Maisha Grant, can DB refuse to go to sentencing? He can refuse to show up to court. He could probably go in the other courtroom. I mean, he has all sorts of rights and he can try to refuse. I don't think he will. Steve Masticola. Some do blackout in episodes. Google it. Okay. See, there are differing opinions, differing medical expert opinions here. I am not giving one because I don't know the answer. Ravina Denver. My son acts and has the same diagnosis as DB. There's not much you can do after 18. We tried to commit him three times, but he won't stay on his own meds. Sad. KK Spencer. My 31-year-old son has bipolar schizophrenia, high-functioning, autism. He can be very violent, and he remembers every single episode. I think what we are learning is, a lot of people suffering from this stuff, a lot of people handle it different ways, and it also presents itself in different ways. If it's legitimate, you get yourself help. If it legitimately causes a catastrophe like this, you can be not guilty by reason of insanity. That, that is part of it. If you have a blackout, you have an episode where you don't remember amnesia, whatever it is, that falls into temporary insanity. Robin Sirica, uh, why can't either of them just say, I'm sorry? I think she did. I, did, I think she said, I'm sorry, a lot. Ashley Ducharme, do the victim statements really change a sentence? I don't think they're going to change this one. In some cases, they can. C.M. Nelson, he remained calm and cogent when he wanted to. Ain't that the truth? Uh, thinner, finer, Oregon. There should, be a, there should be bail reform. The number of times he violated bail or it was so low, this could have been prevented. I hear you, but there are so many stories and arguments where bail is too high or people have no chance to get out or drug offenses send people to prison for too long. And then you have this side of the coin where it's like, yes, people that get arrested so many times should lose the benefit of the doubt. They should have no bail. We shouldn't let them out there until they can prove they're rehabilitated and should go back into society. So these are arguments that we have in our rules committee meetings all the time. And these are arguments that we go, when we talk to politicians in Tallahassee or Washington, D.C. as lobbyists or lawyers to explain how these rules work, how these laws work, how this happens, it's very difficult than to just say, well, we want the death penalty back in Wisconsin or we need bail reform. It's a very difficult, long process, unfortunately, and it, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to be foolproof or perfect. 
Jacqueline Weaver, wasn't he talking about his mom when he said if he wanted her to be there, she would be there? Yes. Zell, procedural question. When something is stricken from the record, is it actually deleted? By the way, sorry about the job, the jab at your golf game. I'm a 20 handicap and have no place to comment on your golf game. <laughs> no problem, Zell. I know it's all in good fun. I can take a joke. I like, I like people taking shots. It makes me think we're friends. Um, so if it's stricken from the record, it is actually – gone from it's supposed to be deleted from the jury's mind but we always say you can't unring that bell if a piece of evidence is stricken it will actually be pulled out now it will be part of the record to show that it was pulled out in case it's an appellate issue um sometimes it, it's still typed into the transcript so we can see that it was actually said in case it is a reversible error or a major issue on appeal that it was said joy puffle as someone who almost married someone who's narcissistic and bipolar only they can truly help themselves. Parents can try, but it's ultimately up to them. Carmen, sorry about the typo. Meant he knew exactly what he was doing by running and changing his appearance and showing consciousness of guilt. That's a great point. There's plenty of it throughout. Just like the car didn't work, except that he was able to back it and, and park it in a hidden location. Bad cat, mad cat. I watched my own mother enable my sibling with bipolar disorder. His mother bailed him out, gave him the car and keys and is now choosing to do the interviews. You can't help someone who doesn't want it. Alyssa Hendry. She was present when he shot at the nephew at her home, bailed him out after running over her ex. At some point, even as a parent, you know better. Yeah, but I'm not going to say it's an easy decision for any parent. Tina. Can we buy those drinking glasses? She started something here. Ha <laughs> ha, I love it. Thank you. No, these are not on the website. This is custom made, but there are some that look similar, just not, not as quite as cool as this one. Tori, I'm so glad DB trial is over now, guys. Let's find a new trial to discuss. Come on, let Peter know, own what we want to get into. As he says, subscribe, hit that like, love this family. Thank you, Tori. Jennifer Profan, interesting to see the public pushing for more responsibility from parents. What do you think about the parents of Crumbly and the latest shooter who have mentally ill kids being held accountable? Very interesting. And this is one of the cases we're covering. I haven't seen a lot happen with the Crumbly parents. I did see that Ethan Crumbly pled guilty. So we'll see how that affects his parents' case because he is now going to be a convicted murderer. So that making them an accessory, that kicks it up a notch. So we'll kind of see how that plays there. Marcy C., Peter, could you please have keychains made up for us to buy with your info and some stickers? I would buy some to pass out. This is a great point, John. Maybe you should screenshot this and we can add this to the merch list. Um, and make some keychains that have like, yeah, my contact info on it so people can throw it on their keyring. That's a great point, Marcy. And hand it out to your friends. Monique, you can't plan mania. You can't reel it in. The psychosis with mania includes delusions of grandeur. Can't be reeled in like he did. Three mania is just like him claiming not to understand. Steph. Uh, many, if not most, parents of children who have severe mental illness are unable to get adequate treatment for their children. Mental health care is lacking in this country for everyone, not just adults. Sarah is a new member. Welcome, Sarah. Cat in Virginia. A mentally ill man burglarized my house and Cordy said, I'm sorry, I was off my meds. My thought was, you had one job to take your meds. He got six years for the burglary and for assaulting his granddad and a cop. It's really sad. It's sad to see stories like that. You got to do something though, right? I mean, we live in a civilized society, so you do have to do something and it's tough. It's very tough. It's not easy to make these laws and, and execute these laws. Lucy D, he is crazy like a fox. He will show up for sensing. He enjoys being in the limelight. I do think he enjoyed the cameras. Julio, initial hearing right after they read off his history and it's shocking just how many times he was let out. I know, I've, I have heard some of that. I haven't seen that hearing, but it's... To think that this was presentable again for the victim's families is brutal. Bill Schley, mom is an enabler, provided car bail. First call was to get an Uber to get DB out of Waukesha. He remembers. Uh, Mick Daly's Mateo. Why is mental eva why a mental evaluation was not completed by prior counsel? I think they were. You have to have it in order to plead not guilty by reason of insanity. I didn't follow the case early enough, um, but I think they did. Uh, Bernice Dooley, Eric Hunley has a great podcast today on DB, so everyone should check that out. Uh, Julie O, uh, the sh is already out of the horse, not unring the bell. Okay, that's Emily saying, I guess. 
Uh, Rebecca, as a fellow attorney myself, it was difficult to watch, especially his demeanor toward the judge. I hope we can all learn something from this. We've learned a lot, I feel like, watching this trial. Law and Lover, Rob, what's up? Peter, you're the lawyer I'm proud to know uh, and the friend I'm proud to have. Measured and even-handed like a true trial attorney of highest repute. Thanks for doing what you do. Golf soon, my friend. We need to make it happen. We got to stop saying it and actually make it happen. We got to put our calendars together and see what we can do. We can either meet somewhere in the middle or you can come down for some Florida golf in the winter, man. The weather's nice. Southern Girl 416, the two witnesses who saw him at the gas station before he drove through the parade didn't mention any type of psychosis or say he seemed out of control. That argument was really never made at trial. That never came before this jury, that he had some kind of psychosis. Eric Wood, or by the whole mental health issues is played out, seems to be an excuse for everything anymore. He was okay to rep himself and claim sob sit. Yeah, he stayed on brand, that's for sure. Uh, Azam, thank you for the super sticker. That laser lady, Courtney Taylor, the only fans trial next. So we are going to get to, let me just hit a couple of these. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you, Patty. All right, so we'll hit a couple of these comments as I talk through some of the cases we're looking at, right? So we have done some on Elon Musk. People wanted me to do another one. He's closing the deal with Twitter. He's saying some stuff, not a lot of legal breakdown. I don't necessarily like just hit the headlines or like the, when I say gossip, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean like the, the celebrity stuff that's happening, I should say. I don't necessarily hit the headlines unless I feel like I can um, add to it. Alex Murdoch is absolutely a case I'm going to follow. I'm heavily interested in that case because I believe that he and, and Girardi should get exactly what's coming to them for taking advantage of their clients like this, which is just brutal. So I will be following that case. And as you can see, I'm following a lot, so I can't do too many. And it's hard to do back to back to back to back to back trials. So I don't want to just jump into another trial like the Masterson one. A lot of you talked about, I can't just jump into a brand new trial. I like to know what's going on um, with this. And like MVD says, we get addicted to these court proceedings. Um, but the two that are most commonly brought up right now are the suitcase murder trial. And gosh, I already forgot about the other one. The other one is the phishing cheating scandal. Um, I was on a podcast. We talked a little bit about that when I was on it. Um, and those are the two that are most interested. So if you're interested in those, let me know. We're going to put up a poll eventually of the next one I'm going to start looking into. I also have to figure out like when these trial dates are happening, when hearings are happening, things like that. Because I like to cover the background of a few cases. So when they get to trial, like when Valo Davo gets to trial, we're going to know. We're going to have the background be ready to go. Um, and the same thing will happen with Alec Baldwin if that one ever goes to trial or if criminal charges ever come down for him. We'll be ready to go on it. The OnlyFans, we will be um, we will be ready to go on that one as well. David Barry does not want to be referred to as DB anymore. So we will, we, there are a bunch that we have already started hitting and Seth Morris wants a little bit of a lighter case. Yeah. I, it's up to you guys, right? I'm picking the ones that you guys are interested in uh, stuck on the Springs. Thank you. So you guys tell me what you're interested in and that'll be the next one that we're going on. But the suitcase one seems to be the one that's got the most interest. Is that going to trial soon? Did I hear that that's in, is that in Florida or was there, Oh no, the clown murder case was in Florida. A couple of people said that one. I don't know where the suitcase one was. Um, but keep me posted on what you guys want. Keep it in the comments. Keep telling me because we are keeping track of the ones that are most commonly asked. And probably next week at some point, we will do a poll where you can pick exactly which video you or which content you want to come next. I have not seen any of the jurors speaking out yet shown up. Cassandra, Peter, are you going to continue covering Murdoch? Yes. And can you please cover Sarah Boone and the suitcase murder? It is a Florida case. Okay, so people said it is a Florida case. All right. I think that one's going to – that one feels like it's going to be on my list because a lot of people have said this Sarah Boone suitcase case. Is that going to trial soon? Where are we at in the process for any of you that have been following it? Let me know. Thank you, Kathy Leverton. Yeah, Lorna, I couldn't tell if it was super stickers or super chats, but I see you're figuring them out. So let's take a second on this one because I know you've thrown a couple up already. Have you talked about the Gabby parents going after Brian parents? I think the trail, the trial is coming up. The trial is not going to be anytime soon. Yes, I have been covering it. And I actually know a lot of the lawyers involved and it's right here in my backyard. I've tried cases in the jurisdiction that they are in. So check out that Brian Laundry and Gabby Petito playlist on my channel. 
Let me know what you think, Lorna. And if you guys want more content on that, again, let me know. Keep it coming. Flood me with the comments of what you want to hear. And that's the content that we'll be doing next. And then when we do the videos, we do the lives, show up and ask your questions because that adds so much to making this an enjoyable discussion and not depressing as all of these topics seem to be like Steph said. They are depressing, but when you guys show up with your questions and with your fun in the comments, it can be a little more of a lighthearted discussion where we really do learn and we try to you know, come together as a community and get through this stuff and work through it together. Bop It wants to hear about the fishing scandal. Uh, Joe, has golf ever, ha ever helped you plan your arguments? I don't think I've ever used golf as an analogy, no. Uh, Peter, I appreciate you valuing focus over scattershot. I do my best. I do my best. Diane Tincher. Some of these mental health meds have horrible side effects, true. I don't condemn people who can't maintain taking them long term. It's all difficult. I think we can just all agree that it's a difficult process no matter where you are in it. Southern Girl. My friends know the Murdoz and live in South Carolina. They said people were afraid of him in those small South Carolina towns. Absolutely. We all know families like that. We've all seen shows and movies. Where do you think they get that stuff? They get it from real life and adapt it into the families that have connections everywhere. If you look at what Girardi did, he had judges and politicians and the California Bar Association in his pocket, literally, knowing what he was doing. They would investigate anybody that was doing what he was doing, but they didn't investigate him. He was rich and famous and in your face and flaunted it with his client's money, literal blood money and death money that his clients were awarded because of catastrophic injuries that they suffered. And he was going on private jets and buying mansions and buying makeup and bags and shoes for his wife so she could show him off on TV. Brutal. People put a lot of trust and faith in lawyers. And when they do that to their clients, it is despicable. And they deserve what they get so that people aren't afraid to trust lawyers. People should not be afraid to trust lawyers. But I understand why they are. I do. Thank you, Morgan and Holly. Jenna, if this is true... He goes into blind rages because of mental illness. How can he be free in public ever without being a risk to society? Oh boy. S. Powell. Suitcase trial is 11 7 That kind of feels like perfect timing. I get a little come down off of this trial, so I'm not trying to, you know, stream two times speed every break I get or listen to this trial in the background. Where is it in Florida? John, put this one on the list. Let's let's do this suitcase trial. Did Erica know Captain Obvious? I don't know. I mean, I think it's plausible that she just thought her husband was rich, right? I mean, he is a PI lawyer handling big cases, right? Tammy, it's in Orlando. Wow, that's really close. Wait, Winter Park. Okay, yeah, Winter Park. Okay, somebody said Clearwater. No, he's not, it's not in Clearwater. I would know if it was in Clearwater. I'm pretty sure. John is... John is the new guy behind the scenes and his company doing a lot of our YouTube producing and social media on our website and website design and pictures and videos and all sorts of stuff. That's John. So I'm referencing him because he's in the chat as well. Joe Gottman, how do you prepare for your opening and closing? Well, I have to have the exhibits. I have to know what the evidence is. And then I usually like to focus on the important things. Focus on the bad actions of the defendant. Focus on how it affected the victim's life, how it changed their life, why it's so serious, why it's important, why we need them to focus in and do what's right. And I focus on what a, every case is different because every plaintiff is different and how it affected them and the injuries that they had, the treatment that they had, the pain and suffering they go to, how it affected the ones around them. So I try to focus on them specifically. And then for closing, I try to give the jury everything they need Whoever, whatever jurors believe my client and are on my client's side, I give him the ammunition to go in there and make sure we get a fair and just verdict for what my client has been through. I don't try to recap every single little thing that happened in the case and closing argument and bore the jury which, with what they just watched for the last five days. Uh, Muniza Zahidali, uh, why do you think in the end when the jury went away, he started acting all cute with the judge? I think he was just enjoying his time. All this interaction he's not used to. All this attention he's not used to. Uh, Joy Puffle, what's the back, background of the suitcase trial? I have no clue. I haven't looked into it at all. Jesse Greathouse, can't accept her assertions of psychosis or blackouts. She's not a medical expert, true. She's not under oath, true. 
uh, the time for that talk was during the trial or even before. You can do a lot of work before on insanity pleas. Uh, Daniel Boberson, excuses from the mom, and it seems that she overcame her fear of being on camera. Yeah, it was weird how one of them, she wouldn't be on camera, but the other one she would. I did think that was weird, too. That was a good catch. Kimberly Conk, please do Sarah Boone. She had a Dyfus case for her putting her son in a suitcase and posting it on her Facebook. The trial starts November 7th in Florida. Law and Lumber, Gerardian, Murdaugh, Warrant, Cursey Words, Peter. It's a kid's show, family show here, Rob, family show here, but they deserve what's coming to them. That's for sure. I'd love to prosecute those cases. I would love to be a special prosecutor on those cases because you know, like you sit there and you know these documents where your clients are like, hey, whatever you think is best. Yeah, yeah, sign right here. What company should I use? Oh, this company that I also own. Um, what lawyers should I use to sue you? These lawyers, I'm going to get kickbacks from them. Horrible. Horrible. Leilani Borsa, what is the clown murder trial? That's how somebody phrased it to me when they threw it at me. I have not researched all of these trials. I usually get the titles and what you guys are most into, and then I try to dig into the ones that we end up doing. Steve, concurrent sentences with parole possible? No, I don't think so. Concurrent life sentences maybe, but I don't think so. I don't think that's what's going to happen here. Uh, Come on, I did not get your name. Oh, yeah, okay, thank you for getting my name right. I, and then the laughing face, yeah, right. Munisa Zahidali. There's no way I got that right, but I'll continue to try. And hopefully, I, I can tell you're not offended by me butchering it. So I, I, I apologize for it. I almost called you Mizuno because those are the clubs that I hit. So I almost said Mizuno when I first looked at your name. Blackouts stop after gunshots and bodies on the windshield. Potentially, that could be true. Um. Thank you, Ro. Okay. We're at the one hour mark. No overtime tonight. Thank God. We've done so much of it. I appreciate everybody joining me. Uh, probably no live tomorrow, but we will play some kind of video. Um, we might play a video on the weekend as well. I think we're going to start pushing towards that um, suitcase case, it seems like. Um, and keep it coming to let me know what you want. But I appreciate, as always, somebody coming in, taking their time to watch this, to interact with this, to make this more enjoyable so I can know what people are thinking and what people are asking. Um, and I can know why people come to talk to a lawyer and listen to a lawyer about these cases and about these things. And a uh, polite or a uh, bolly bop. So is John the one that puts up your super chats? Because this was the third time plus when I became a member and not even a grunt response. Well, there you go. Now you're here. Mm, mm. Member. Welcome to the membership crew. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I like practicing law. It's fun. I love doing this. It's a lot of fun. Um, representing people is a lot of fun. And we can do both. Windy City Gal. Dang, worked late. Hospitals never stop. I'll catch the rest and watch and replay. Thank you for explaining so thoroughly. Awesome work. Thank you. Yes, and let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, Tina Crichton, watching slash following the past two trials with you, I've definitely strengthened my muscle on asking better questions, rephrasing, et cetera. In my line of work, it's an amazing difference. Suitcase trial sounds good. Well, thank you, Tina. And Tina seems like she's down to ride whatever trial we pick, and that's, that's my kind of gal. Uh, NA, New Mexico compound suspect, suspects ruled competent to stand trial after four-year delay. Defense asked judge to throw out all the evidence from the search of the compound. Interesting. Rob, Friday night, Friday night frenzy, tomorrow night, invite open but never expected. Okay, send me the link. I will try to pop on because I – oh, I can't. I can't. Sorry. <laughs> I, was just saying, I was just saying how I'm not going to do a live tomorrow. I have a Halloween, like, dress-up Bridgerton. I have nothing to wear. Uh, one of my neighbors is throwing a Halloween party that we're going to. My wife bought a whole getup. I have nothing to wear. I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this point. Uh, we are planning on putting my hair like in a little guest on like bow, you know, I guess the, I've never watched Bridgerton either, but I'm told it's like the frilly, like that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm going to be at a Halloween like costume party tomorrow night, Rob. Um, but I will still show up and hit that like button on Friday night frenzy and everybody that's here. Check that out. I'm sure he'll be talking Daryl Brooks among other things. Thank you, Rob. 
Uh, Shannon, we need picks, Peter. I don't know if they're going to be any good. I got to find something to wear between now and then, but you'll get some picks. I'll get you some picks. And you guys are going to like even more what I dress up as for my church's trunk or treat because you've seen it before. That'll be my hint. And as you can tell, I don't have a lot of Halloween costumes. So get ready for that. Uh, Marie Stark, isn't the plaintiff the dead victims since they can't speak, the state is appointed to be their voice? So n- I, I don't know if you're making a joke from the Daryl Brooks trial, but in my case is sometimes the plaintiffs are, have passed away and it'll be their personal representative of their estate. Sometimes they have not passed away and they're an injured victim and they um, will still be there. The plaintiff will actually be there testifying about their case or multiple plaintiffs if multiple people were injured. Okay. That's it for me tonight, people. You're the best as always. And I can't wait to see you next time. I'm out.